Hi everyone, Michelle Ford here, SLR Lounge Senior Editor. In this episode, I wanted to talk about family photos at weddings, and I'm talking about the kind that moms love and that couples really cherish. How do you set yourself apart for a successful shot? Family formals after the ceremony, pretty much a given at all weddings. But the problem is you only have 30 very, very rushed minutes after the ceremony to corral all that family and get them in and out of your shoot scene. And you get exactly what was planned, a very formal image. Not to say that they aren't desirable, of course, they make it into albums, frames, mantles, what have you. But what my clients tend to appreciate more are the genuine interactions among the close family members. Early in my career, golden moments like that would develop in different scenarios purely by accident. In sheer luck, I would happen to be there. Camera in hand, eye on the viewfinder, able to capture them. Luck, pure luck. My clients and their parents would contact me about them later just to tell me how much they loved it. And it happened often enough and it made me realize I really needed to control that situation so that I could make it happen at every wedding instead of relying on the luck of the draw. Number one is ask the question. Our studio sends out a questionnaire to the bride and groom to find out all the people they're close to and if there are any relationships that are of sensitive nature that we need to be aware of. Have that conversation with your client. Things like divorces, step families, adoptive families, happy relationships, bitter ones, whatever, all of these are special circumstances and they could create tension in your workflow so you need to be aware of it. You don't want to step on toes when you're shooting intimate moments. There's an example of the bride, for example, whose parents are divorced. Maybe they're civil enough and they're willing to pose in a photo together, but neither wants the, the photo. I really don't like to waste my time unless maybe the bride wanted that picture. I want to take photos that would be meaningful to all the parties involved but I wouldn't know about it if I didn't ask. So in those cases, I might even go as far as asking the bride for the specific groupings that she wants. But of course that covers negatives of relationships. Conversely, asking the question allows me information ahead of time that I wouldn't have otherwise known, like maybe a bride who was really close to an aunt or a grandparent, which brings me to point number two. During the consult and during timeline planning, I would suggest to the brides and to the grooms have the people that matter to them the most in the getting ready room, if it's possible. Parents, grandparents, siblings, best friends. Of course, siblings and best friends, they're usually part of the bridal party anyway, but parents sometimes aren't in the room with them or the special aunt or grandma. Preparations before the wedding, super chaotic, super hectic, but very emotionally charged moments. So having that person there to help them get ready, or even just to be around for the process, you'll find some amazing moments and they'll just unfold in front of you. And I'm such a sucker for tearjerker moments. If I can facilitate a story, I will. So that's number two. Number three, even though the formal photo sessions after the ceremony might have that same collection of people, I always make sure that before the ceremony, in the getting ready room, maybe right at the church, I get a photo of the bride with their parents together and then also individually with just mom or just dad and then the same with the groom. During those individual photos, I'll ask mom or dad to give them a hug, a look, maybe a word of encouragement, and then I make the bride or groom give their parent a hug to say thank you. In my experience, those photos are the ones that mom loves the most. Those are the ones I get the most calls about, so I'll always make it happen. Now, sometimes we just run out of time. That's typical, right? So if I can't make those intimate images happen, number four goes into place. I'll make sure I find a couple of minutes to just do it during the reception. Sometimes it's actually better because by then everybody's relaxed, maybe had a few drinks, let the guard down. It's a fun environment. Everybody's accustomed to having the camera around by then, but I'm a total type A. So I actually prefer to have this in the bag and done for sure before the ceremony if I can make it happen. But a lot of times it's actually the groom's parents that are running late. So if you don't have time again, feel free to do it during the ceremony. Number five, don't forget your grandparents. Now I don't wanna be morbid or anything, but a lot of times these formal affairs, they're few and far between. It's the only time that the entire family is gathered in one place. So I'm always looking out for the grandparents and I'm shooting them with a couple or the family as much as possible. 
I can't tell you how many times I've had emails from clients and they tell me how cherished those photos were as the last happy image that was taken of the grandparents with a family. So be on the lookout for grandparents. Number six, be diligent always at weddings. I'm hyper aware of who's close to whom. I keep an eye on reactions during the ceremony, toasts, dances, and if you're paying attention, you should be able to spot the people that will give you the best emotions. And sometimes you just get some really lucky gems. Now I'm sure you guys do all these things already, but like I said, I really wanted to aim for consistency. And to be successful, I needed to know what all those elements were and have them in place. I really want to hear from you guys what strategies you implement to get your genuine stories to unfold. So shoot me a comment, let's exchange ideas, and then we'll go from there. Until then, Michelle Ford, over and out.